Howdy people, NorCal Bass here. What's going on? Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite finesse fishing techniques. We're talking today about the Wacky Rig. The Wacky Rig is a great tool that you can use for a variety of different applications. Whether you're on a pressured body of water, you're just having a hard time getting bit, or trying to figure out where the bass are. The Wacky Rig is a great technique that you can use in any season, in any time of the year, on multi-species of fish in order to get that bite. So today what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is how I like to rig it up the kind of rod and line that I use, and some different areas that you can use this. I also prefer to use the wacky rigging tool. There's everything from weighted wacky uh, hooks and all different types of wacky worms you can use. So this is just one example of the many you can use for wacky rigging. So to begin, I'm not one of those guys that can afford a rod and a reel for every different fishing application that exists. For that reason, I try to get uh, a lot of multi-purpose rods. And, this is one that I like to use here. This is a seven foot medium rod. It's got a pretty fast action. It's got a very sensitive tip. You wanna make sure you're using line that's pretty sensitive as well. For the most part, it's good to use an eight to 12 pound mono or fluorocarbon line. Um, braid is not your first choice for this one, uh, unless you're a kind of braid kind of guy. I've got braid rigged up here. Um, it's a good technique if you wanna fish uh, an area that's a little bit stained or around structure, and of course it'll help you with that. But for the most part, 8 to 12 pound mono or fluoro will get the job done for you. Um, this technique is very simple, it just utilizes some uh, twitches of the rod tip. Uh, when you cast it out there, you want to leave the bale open. Okay, So when you cast it, you're going to leave the bale open and what happens is there's a very seductive flutter. What you'll notice is that the wacky rigging really gets hit quite often on the fall. It's, it's not on that first cast, usually you give it a couple twitches It'll twitch up and down, and then as it falls in the water column, you'll notice that that's when you'll get hit. So uh, when you do throw your first cast, keep that bale open, let it sink down, but you want to keep an eye on that line and wait, because that's usually when you're going to get hit. So uh, if you don't get hit on that first one, then of course close it. You're going to reel up your slack and twitch it and pause it, and then you're going to let it fall. So you want to be irregular with that. You don't want to make it very uh, rhythmic or consistent. You want to be irregular if you twitch it twice and let it fall, and the next time maybe you twitch it three times, you twitch it once. You want to make it look natural. Um, also, it's good sometimes to drag it underneath the structure that's under the water. So maybe up and over a log, a rock pile, those kind of different areas. So um, what we'd like to do here also is it's a great technique that you can use in many, many different areas. When it gets hot and the bass start to hunker down, you can target this wacky rig into some shade spots. You can skip it underneath docks. You can throw it in areas like rock piles or points really anywhere where they might try to take shelter and um, or if you're just on a new body of water sometimes it's a great tool to throw out there once again you don't always get the big bites that you want but if you can you can attract uh, some pretty big bass over to your wacky rig all right so now let's talk a little bit about rigging the wacky rig uh, you'll see a lot of guys on youtube throwing this on a uh, casting rod and a casting setup and uh, while yes you can absolutely do that what i find is that uh, sometimes especially when you're using the wacky rigging technique. Uh, when you throw that worm out, if it's pretty damaged and uh, shears in half, just like this, when you throw it, uh, now you find yourself with a pretty nasty bird's nest or backlash in your casting reel. And we all know how much fun that is. So I actually like to throw this on a spinning setup. And again, that lighter gear is really good for the sensitivity. So uh, what I use is this Trocar wacky rigging hook. You can see Basically, most wacky rigging hooks made by different manufacturers are made to be a little offset. They're a little wide gap to help prevent the fish from spitting it once you've pinned them. And um, really, you can go with a variety of different sizes. You can go with a one, one aught, two aught. It's really up to you. Uh, and what we're going to do here, as opposed to other wacky rigging techniques that include actually piercing the body of the soft plastic, is we're going to use this wacky rigging tool. And what this is, it's got some O-rings on, and we're going to make an X on that soft plastic. We're going to pass the worm straight, or throw the hook rather, straight through that X, and it's going to help protect the body and the integrity of our worm. Maybe get us a few more casts out there because, as great as the bait that the Senkos are, they definitely don't stand up to many fish before you got to bait another one, and that gets expensive. So, uh, to do this, we're going to start by finding not quite the center of the worm, but right just kind of shy of center. So, on Senkos, this is a four inch one here. But even on five inch ones or longer, uh, I find that the best spot is right here at the end of the smooth strip where it meets the bumps here. That's the best spot where you want to be able to get your desired action and the uh, proper casting. So to do this, we're going to insert the head of our worm into the wacky rigging tool. 
and you're going to need to slide up two O-rings, okay? You're gonna do it one at a time. The first one needs to go right where the edge of that smooth strip meets the bumps. It needs to go right on there. Now the next part in order to make your X can be a little bit tricky, but uh, it takes some practice, but once you get it, it is a great technique for you. So what I like to do is to keep it um, still somewhat in the barrel of the wacky rigging tool here. You can see the O-ring barely poking out. I like to angle it a little bit, and what this will do is help me create that X. And you see there, with that X, now I can pass the hook cleanly underneath that X, really not piercing the body of the worm at all, and this is going to help protect the integrity of it. So, just like so, we're gonna go just shallow of the X there. And you'll see now that the hook is held in place more by the O-rings and not the actual product of the worm itself. So here, this allows you to get that twitching and falling action you can see rides right in the center. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a quick down and dirty on the wacky rig. As a recap, this is a great technique that you can use on a pressured body of water where the bass are used to seeing a variety of different lures and techniques. It's great for uh, all seasons. It's great for uh, hot summer days when the bass have hunkered down into shady areas or into cooler, uh, deeper water. Uh, it's also great in cold water when the bass are very lethargic and not really wanting to hit a lot of things. This keeps the bait in the strike zone for longer and it entices them with that action to uh, come take a bite. So remember what with the wacky rig, this is not a rig that you need to fish rapidly or burn it through the water. Just as if you were fishing a Texas rig stick bait, you want to make sure that this is slow and methodical. You want to make sure that you are uh, being irregular in your retrieve, right? It's kind of a twitch, twitch, pause, let it fall. Maybe another twitch or three twitches. Again, it's all up to you. Basically, what you'll do is you'll find your cadence and you'll find what works for you, but ultimately you want the bass to tell you uh, what they want. You'll figure out with different colors, different techniques. Once again, once you're figuring out exactly where you want to throw that bass, which again, you can skip it under different points of structure, docks, you can throw it uh, in different areas where you think bass might be hiding out. Point is, it's a great technique that you can use. Make sure you're throwing in on some light line and you'll find yourself getting bit on the wacky rig tons of times. Thanks very much for watching. If you like these videos, please let me know. I'd love to put more videos out for you guys and share what I know about fishing. Uh, until then, thank you so much. Have a great day.